My name is Linda Manimtim, and uh, um, I am so privileged to be part of a team that has been researching, designing, developing, implementing, and evaluating an alternative digital literacy training models for newcomers. Um, a little bit of background, Sherry Seymour is here with us. She's our project lead and our content developer, and we're overseen by Stuart Schwartz, who is a program manager. And I am so unashamedly um, excited to be able to share what we've been obsessively working on for the past three years. And I'd also like to thank NorQuest and Marco for providing this virtual space for us. Um, I'd also like to recognize the privilege and the gratefulness I have to be able to live and work on Treaty 1 territory, which are the original lands of the Anishinaabe, the Cree, the Oji Cree, the Dakota and the Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. And also I am so grateful to have privilege to have access to high speed internet, at least hopefully for the next hour, uh, so I don't get cut off. Um, so. How did this start our project? Well, it started with an SDI uh, grant uh, because of a team of LINK and EL instructors wanted to re-examine the way that computer literacy and ESL classes were delivered at the Language Training Center. They found that CLB levels and digital literacy levels were not always correlated so that someone with very high CLB might, might not necessarily have a high level of digital literacy. And also we wanted to provide um, something that was tailored to the specific needs of the students. So they applied for SDI funding uh, and they researched, developed, and tested this alternate method, which is completely asynchronous, self-paced, and flexible delivery that is based on the student skills and their completion of activities as they go through the course. So we started off with a literature review and we looked at models of digital literacy, some from MediaSmart, some from ESL for All, all over and from dating back 50 years. You can imagine digital literacy is not a new thing, although it has become prominent in, in recent years. And so we synthesized that together and developed a model of digital literacy for employability for newcomers. And you can see there are four main competency areas, which are productivity, um, relating to applications, managing files, uh, content, which also relates to digital citizenship, access and evaluation and collaboration uh, which is communication community learning how do you how do you talk to people online in an appropriate and a safe manner and finally technology which is what hardware what devices are you using how do you maintain them how do you make sure they're working properly so that's kind of the big picture of digital literacy for, see for us we condensed it down into three modules that increase in complexity and this represents over a hundred competencies basically performance indicators that tell you if you can do all of these things, are you digitally literate? Um, now, of course, we want all of our learners and all of us included to be able to use technology, share using technology and create using technology. But all of that stuff is really irrelevant if they can't be safe online and using technology. So where we started in our develop, we started with digital security, which includes things like choosing um, professional usernames with email addresses, creating and remembering uh, secure passwords. You know, the one we had for hopping was 10 characters with a special character, a number, a capital and lowercase letters. That's a lot to remember. So we, we um, described and did practice with strategies for those things. Also with navigating the internet, um, distinguishing between ads versus content and general protecting your on, I, your identity online. That's where we started in our development. And three things that were really important to us when we did this course uh, were interactivity, the immersiveness of the course, and that it was authentic. So interactive things are really important. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I'm really bad at watching videos. I'm really bad at reading. I'm a terrible, like a chronic skimmer of information. So uh, we wanted it to be interactive. It's not a passive experience. They're not just receiving things. They they can't actually move on to the next activity until they have paid attention, studied, and completed and mastered a skill. So there are lots of options for interacting with the facilitator through chat, through video appointments, with their peers, through video discussions, discussion boards, and also with the content itself. The content is designed to be immersive, which means that the learner engages with it. They make choices. Um, we have a lot of simulations where they're presented with a situation that looks like a real world scenario and they have to make choices and depending on what they choose, they are presented with different information and they have to circle back. I'll give you an example in a minute. And also we want it to be authentic, real life workplace tasks and scenarios. So like, like for example, doing online job research um, or choosing from phishing emails, all of that stuff is real issues, but we don't want them to have to do that in the real world because there are real world consequences for 
for clicking on links in emails or even text messages. So here's an example of a simulation. And the basic idea is it's a real world situation without the real world consequences of making a bad choice. So it's like a little bubble, a protective bubble. And um, we've created lots of things in H5P, in Captivate, and in Articulate Storyline, where it feels like a real situation. Here's just an example. Um, there are lots of phishing attacks. One of them is the Canada Post one. Um, I've gotten this uh, quite a bit and they look so real where it says we, for example, here, we, we need you to verify your address, click this link. And so based on the information they, they're given, they have to make a choice and depending on their choice. So if they decide to verify their address, which is the scam, then they're presented with information on why that is a bad choice. They can also choose other things. We have another simulation uh, to do with uh, job research. I was describing that earlier where someone is applying for a job and they're presented with something that looks exactly like a web page from a company or an organization in Winnipeg. And they have to click through the links. They're brought to different pages, but this is not really on the, on the their website. This is a contained simulation that was created to replicate it. If you want to think about it, it's like a choose your own adventure. Um, I used to love those as a kid, but instead of turning pages, they're going to different sites or pages on the web. Now, here is a list. I'm going to put it in the chat box later. It's also on the pa Padlet of some of the sample exercises. We have a job research simulation, a passphrase, uh, practice activity and an interactive ac video. And I'll put those links on a little bit later when I'm not uh, running out of breath trying to get through my 10 minutes. Marco, don't worry, I have a timer on this time. <laughs> okay, so what, what did we do to test these things? Because you can create everything you want, but if you don't test it, you don't know how people will react to it. So we did four pilots, ranging in, in participant number from 16 people to 69 uh, people in each one. And we started out with a very supported group in a lab class, we moved to remote, and then then we removed, uh, then we moved to regional. So we had participants from the Yukon, from the Northwest Territories, from British Columbia, from Alberta, from Saskatchewan, and of course, from Manitoba as well. And what did we find? Well, uh, first of all, we found that, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, that yes, people want digital literacy training materials and flexible online learning models are effective for digital literacy training for a diverse range of CLB levels. 98% um, of all of our participants uh, said that they learned from the course. Um, also, we found that development for maximum impact involves using e-learning authoring tools that deliver learning objects that are not specific to one particular MLM, LMS, whether you use Moodle, D2L, Canvas, whatever it is, they should not rely specifically on that. Uh, so H5P, Articulate, Captivate, Flipgrid, and Quizlet are great. Um, and I will, I, will t I will say them again, but I'm sure I can type them. Sherry might be able to type them as well. Um, now, our design and development team was not really impacted by the shift to remote work and remote learning because we were already using a lot of virtual tools and we found that the students actually really like the flexibility as well. So I know sometimes it's really hard, but it can be done. Um, and we did find a drastic, well, a 30% increase in skills and also I think very importantly, almost a 15% increase in confidence as well. So here's just a little summary of some of our findings from pilot four and pilot one and part, pilot two quotations. Um, Interestingly enough, in pilot four, we had a range of C from CLB three to CLB eight, and we didn't have any significant requests for help with the language in the course. What we did have was a request for technical help, and that had a lot to do with our platform. So 58% of all of the 20, 256 communication requests over two weeks were for technical help. They also wanted human connection, uh, emotional support, and some administrative things but not really for language. So I think we have to think about um, the way that we deliver and the assumptions we make about language and digital literacy. Uh, we are moving some of this onto Avenue. Uh, you'll be happy to know we are gonna post it when it's finished uh, on, uh, on our LinkedIn, but also you'll be able to find it on Avenue. Um, so we're migrating this courseware there where it will be available. And we've also received uh, some funding for research from our RRC Polytech uh, to investigate and expand the framework to include specific industries like nursing, transportation, and trades. And I am so excited for the collaboration aspect. Uh, again, thank you so much for organizing this because I think it is really important that we collaborate and that we share information. And we 
absolutely welcome any comments, questions, um, violent reactions, whatever it is you have, we are happy to communicate with you. I know we're going to be networking later today, but also if you would like to take note of our email addresses or our socials on Twitter and LinkedIn, we're happy to connect with anyone.